All right, let's talk about Marvel. Uh, yeah. Deadpool, X Men 90, 97, uh, mm -hmm. the future of Marvel. Um, yes. Let me let me ask you this, uh, just a general yes. question. Where where in your opinion is is Marvel today? Uh, what Disney there is putting out. They are on the struggle bus is where Disney is. They are having a real hard time after Endgame. They've really lost the plot. They they have no idea where they're going, what the fuck they're doing. As evidenced through all of their random multiverse plots that have been all over the place. And they're also just struggling like they've, you know, when you first start doing something, like when they first made their, you know, Avengers movies and all these other things that were like really successful, it, you know, they had a formula, a recipe. But that recipe's grown stale. We're bored. Give us something new. But they keep thinking, well, this worked in the past. We'll just keep doing, telling the same story over and over again. It's like, no, 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 no. You gotta, yeah. <laughs> you gotta, you gotta switch it up. You gotta build upon it. And so they're really lost right now, to, in from my perspective. And right. I feel like X Men is a property that they haven't tapped yet and put into play. And so X Men is something that could potentially revive them like a little bit because they've been flagging. Um, but at the same time, the creative decisions and the people that are in charge, I don't necessarily trust like how they're going to translate the X-Men. And so I'm, I'm extremely worried. Like they're just going to fuck it up and ruin right. it. Well, and then, yeah. Yeah. Well, let's take a step back. What, what is your, uh, what, what's your history with Marvel comics? Uh, my history with Marvel Comics, it really started in the 90s with the cartoon shows. Uh, 1994, the X-Men and the Spider-Man cartoons came out, and I was hooked. I was just like, yes, I want to know more. Give me more. And so that got me into the trading cards. That got me into reading the comic books. And I've been a fan of the X-Men, like, ever since. And so, uh, and I've even done, like, three Epic History X-Men, like, documentary series uh, things you can find on YouTube. Like, I just, I, I created a, a capsule collection of casual cosplay wear. I got my Gambit hoodie on that, like, I created a long time ago. So, I mean, that's, like, I love the fucking X-Men, okay? They're like, I'm a mutant. I'm a mutant, okay? The Avengers, I don't give a fuck about. But X-Men, like, yes, that's where I hang my hat um, yeah. with Marvel. Yeah, I mean, I'll go back to, uh, I started collecting X-Men uh, long before, <sighs> before you. Uh, it was, I believe it was the <laughs> late 70s. Uh, my first, my first X-Men comic book, my first comic book, period. But that's like the yeah. best time, the late 70s, 80s. Like, that's like yeah. the greatest time in X-Men history, in my opinion. Oh, yeah. Well, my first my first series was the Hellfire Club. Uh, Hot, yeah, yeah, John Byrne, and um, you know it was. I just remember, look, right I, during I, the Phoenix Saga. I mean, that's during the Phoenix Saga, right correct? The Phoenix, yeah, I mean, this was the you know Matt like Knight. right, yeah, 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 and um, I, I just remember picking up that comic book, and because uh, I think my before that I was basically picking up Archie's at at truck stops on long trips. But this yes. is the first time I went into a 7-Eleven, bought an X-Men comic book. And mm -hmm. uh, and I remember reading that story because it was so, uh, A, it was so adult. Um, yeah. Because Mastermind was screwing around with Jean Grey's mind. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, and there was, there was kind of this BDSM element to, to oh, it. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. And, uh, you know, it was these, you know, these really hot and sexy corsets and costumes and uh and they were just screwing around with uh with all the x-men mm -hmm. i remember them being uh you know all being captured by the hellfire club uh yeah mastermind controlling jean gray and which yeah. ultimately turned her into dark phoenix and then yes that whole thing. yes so and, good and high drama exactly and and i i've, I've you know i i guess i want to i kind of want to go down two paths here but um one of the things of that about X Men '97 was, you know, I, I always felt like it's it's too much of a kids' film or a kids' show, mm -hmm. um, you know. And you know, I was reading, you know, the Hellfire Club in in junior high. Uh, yeah. You know, I felt like I could handle it, and I, and I kind of wish that uh, it was. I kind of wish the series was like that. I mean, granted, yeah. the, the cartoon series came out when I was uh, getting my graduate degree. <laughs> But, uh, well, I mean, what, go ahead. Yeah. How do you feel about the X Men '97 then? Because it's really horny. Like X Men '97, except they didn't do the Goblin Queen under boob. They like they have kind of censored some things here and there. But I mean, they've definitely like put sex like into X Men for the '97 yeah. series. 
I know that was that was the thing that uh here let me that was the thing about um watching X-Men 97. Uh it was kind of like who who is this for? Because mm -hmm. I think they were trying to go for the more adult themes uh, of of the X-Men, but at the same yeah. time they were kind of treating it as if it were a you know a a you know a week week an afternoon kids television show. Mhm. Mm cartoon series mm -hmm. and it was just weird to kind of watch it because it was like it, i it, i like the fact that it tried to go in that direction but mm -hmm. i didn't like the fact that it didn't go far enough yeah well i feel like they're they're kind of in the middle though because they want to they're gonna attract people like us who grew up with the you know the um 90s 1994 series so like they're definitely trying to get my people back um who are like oh i was a kid i watched it that was my gateway but a lot of people my age have kids now so this if i had a child i would definitely be like oh we're gonna watch x-men 97 i'm gonna expose my child to x-men and hopefully they'll fall in love with x-men too and then i get to also relive the fun and uh and so i think they're writing that line between making it consumable for children because again they need children to, they gotta buy those toys they gotta you know they gotta sell products they gotta like use this to make money um but they're also making it appeal to you know the original fans of the original um cartoon series and uh you know putting stuff in there for adults too so i think they're doing a decent job of both although of course i'm an adult i i, I wish i would love to see a balls out adult x-men series Mm -hmm. But I, I understand the, you know, keeping it for the kids, too. Yeah. I mean, I didn't really watch the original series. So let me ask you this. Uh, yes. Does it feel like it's a good continuation of the original series? Or do you feel like uh, the impression I get is maybe there this leans more into nostalgia than it is a, a true sequel to the original? Yes. OK, so the original series really just did a lot of the storylines from the comics. Now, of course, they truncated these stories a little bit and they adapted them and they weren't exactly like they were in the comics. It wasn't a one-to-one -one adaptation by any stretch of the means, but they really were just doing the stories from the Claremont era comics. And like, that's why it was so good. Cause it was just like, oh, uh, they're using all this amazing uh, source material and really utilizing it well. And they let it breathe a little bit more but not again, not as much as the comics, like they were more truncated. Now in this 97 version, they are ripping through storylines at the speed of yeah. fucking light. And <laughs> yeah. I I'm don't understand. I do not understand why. Like, I don't know. It's, a, it's, they're really going through them very quickly. They're burning through them very, very fast. And it takes away the drama of them. And mm -hmm. I wish that they would slow down a little bit. Like, I mean, you don't have to, cause like the Phoenix saga takes place over like five fucking years. Okay. Like Phoenix, yeah. dark Phoenix. It's like a five year situation. We can't do that. Okay. I get it. But we don't need to just put like they've, Oh, they've just done like the hellfire gala mixed yeah. with um, the Genosha new X-Men thing and like did that in like one episode or something and then like the Inferno story arc uh, was done in like two episodes and it's just like what the fuck like slow down motherfuckers like you're what are you gonna do because like this is what happened on Game of Thrones they just burned through the series so fast and it's like you could have taken that first book and put it into two three seasons of mm -hmm. a show and yet they like smashed it all into one season of a show. And then when they finally came to the end and they didn't have any more source material, they obviously didn't know what the fuck they were doing and yeah. they ruined it. And it's like, so is that what's going to happen here with X-Men 97? I don't know. Yeah. They, Cause it feels like they're, they're more concerned about getting the narrative out there. And as you say, not letting it breathe and not getting the themes behind those narratives. Yeah. You know, they, each, each episode weirdly has this moment where someone says something that, that kind of encapsulates the theme of that episode, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. like um, when when Madeline Pryor is trying to, uh, you know, stop the X Men. You know, she has to be reminded about the, the birth of her son and, and yeah. the joy that brings. And um, but again, you know, like you say that that's that's one episode, and yeah. they just went through it real fast. The the other thing is, you know, the mutant massacre. Uh, yeah. I mean, the, you know, yeah, was much more of a massacre than a, than an <laughs> attack on Genosha. Uh, I, there was imagery in that mutant massacre that will that mm -hmm. will never leave my mind. What they did to Angel uh, in the <sighs> mutant massacre, 
Yeah. Um, it, you know, it, it I, that, that's one of those moments that will, will stay with me forever. Just, uh, yeah. you know, to see angel basically crucified. Yeah. Uh, and, um, you know, again, it goes back to the, the adult stories that I remember from the comic book and, and, and kind of saying we, we don't need to necessarily pander to children, even though mm -hmm. I know that's what they're doing here. Yeah. And, um, you know, there's no, there's no sponsors to, uh, to appease. So you could actually go into, uh, you know, tell these stories a lot darker. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, and I just, I wish they'd slow down and just chill a little bit, you know, cause I don't trust them to go off on their own. <laughs> I don't right. trust them. And I'm like, is this, are we going into like, Krakoa business because I know that when they first started this they didn't they only had one season that had been greenlit mm -hmm. and now seasons two and three have been greenlit and okay. so from what I hear uh and so but that's my question it's like well wait are we heading into like Krakoa hawks and pox like stuff because like I really don't want to do that <laughs> Because that went nowhere, and that's already like being um, retconned, I believe, within the comics. I think, from what I heard, I had to stop mm -hmm. reading because I was like, "These suck." And I yeah, I mean, did reading. the first series do the Dark Phoenix saga? Hmm? Yeah, did, uh, did yeah. Jean Grey? Ball yeah. Oh yeah. Thing? Oh yeah. They they okay. did the Phoenix and the Dark Phoenix saga for sure, and okay. they and they spread it out too. It wasn't in like one episode. <laughs> it was well, like, and, they, and they changed the ending apparently too. Yeah. Yeah, and then the whole well, Madeline Pryor thing, you know, that was that was several issues. And this oh, was that was all in one episode. The no, the Madeline Pryor thing again, that unfolded uh, over several years mm -hmm. of comic books. That whole thing um was a whole deal. So, it's just yeah, it's, you can't do it in like two episodes. I mean, you can do it in two episodes, but uh, well, like... I know we Yeah, I know we've complained about it for the last few minutes. What but it, it sounds like you, you kind of like it. I do. I mean, you know, it's not, I wish the animation was a little better. Um, I definitely have my issues with it, but like, man, like that fucking Magneto rogue silver daddy hop business. <laughs> so hot, you know, and I'm like, yes, like bitch, get it. Like, Oh, that shit's so good. I love the drama. And I really like that. Like in, so they're taking some of the new X-Men stuff from Grant Morrison's run and in it spoilers, Emma and Scott start having a psychic affair, not Madeline. And Madeline dies at the end of Inferno and Jean just kind of absorbs all of her memories. So Madeline lives on within Jean. Mm -hmm. um, but now they're doing it like, oh, you were having a psychic affair with Madeline, which I really like. I'm like, oh, I like that Madeline's still around. I like that like he's having a psychic affair with her. But then I guess she's dead now anyways. So who cares? So it's mm -hmm. like, well, you killed her off anyways. What the fuck was the point? You know, like, God damn it. And I was wondering if they were, I'm like, are they going to find Emma in her diamond form? And yes. And so I was just like, ah, reputation. So, I mean, it's fun. Um, I'm not, I'm not, I, I wish Cassandra Nova had come in because um, she was a part of the, the Genosha destruction thing. And like, I would love to see some Cassandra Nova business, but it doesn't look like that. Looks like Cassandra Nova's showing up in the Deadpool movie, not in uh, X-Men 97, which is really interesting. Um, yeah. But well, all that stuff's past me. I, I <laughs> there, there's a point where uh, when comic books, uh, when the price of comic books rose to a dollar, yeah, I was like, yeah. I can't afford a dollar twenty five anymore. And yeah, so that's kind of when I dropped up. But uh, but I cried in that fifth ep episode though when they when you know yeah yeah when Gambit when Gambit right. our boy Gambit my God, yeah. took one for the team. I was like, Ooh, they got me, man. And then when uh, Magneto was like, "Don't be afraid," and he said it in German to like Leech. And I was just like, oh, and man, they got me. They got me with this last one too. And Rogue is crying over her dead friends. Mm -hmm. And I got a couple dead friends and I started fucking crying again. And I was just like, oh, they got me. X-Men, you're always there for me. Um, yeah, I, I will say, yeah, Gambit, the Gambit story uh, is like, okay, uh, I don't, I don't hate this series. <laughs> yeah. As you say, the, the animation, I'm not a big fan of this, the, the animation. It could um, be better. Yeah. And, and I, Look, when I first when we first started talking about X Men '97, I just basically said it's for kids. I didn't like mm -hmm. the animation. I still feel that way, but uh, I do appreciate the fact that uh, you know there's some there's some pretty adult themes that are going on. Uh, yeah, just, 